But what's important to realize is that there's a timeline to economics. You don't have an action today and have an immediate effect within the economy. It takes a while for these things to progress their way through. Keep that in mind when we're talking about 2000, well, the second half of 2013 and 2014, because there are some problems coming at us. But my major concern for folks all over this country today is that they're not ready for the ongoing demands that will be placed on their businesses. They're not ready for 2012 in particular and how much volume is going to be coming their way in the way of businesses. The big questions today in my mind shouldn't be how is Japan going to impact the United States because it isn't going to have that big of an impact on the United States. The big question you should be asking yourself today is do I have enough of the right skilled talent in my businesses to be profitable going forward? Or am I going to be paying all sorts of overtime as I chase this business? Do you have the right resources? Do you have the right materials on hand for the business that's coming at you? Have you borrowed money so that you can leverage this rising trend? Those are the more salient questions as far as we are concerned at ITR. You want to see the future? It tends to rhyme with the past. Here's 2011, here's 2012. What you need to do is figure out where your, what your role is in that, where you fit in. And ask yourself if you're ready for it, good or bad. Which is an important point, by the way. Let me just give you a little sidebar. At ITR, although the message is largely the same as last year in terms of where this recovery is going, if it needed changing, I would change it. So we don't fundamentally care whether the economy is going up or going down. We can't afford to. As soon as you start analyzing with the bias of wanting to prove your point, then your, an your analysis is worth nothing. All I care about and all my team cares about is seeing the future for you, good or bad. That's why we're able to call this downturn and why we're able to call the recovery. If it was going to be bad in 11, I'd tell you, folks. One of the best indicators for that is the bond market. And we're going to be taking a look at that leading indicator. It's a great harbinger of what to expect in the future. So I've been looking at it every single day because of what's going on in Libya, because of what's going on in the Middle East, because of Japan. And the bond market is shrugging it off. The bond market isn't terribly worried about the fact that Japan is no longer going to be buying U.S. government debt. And if the bond market isn't worried about it, you and I don't need to be worried about it either. Bond market is a much more prescient indicator than is the stock market, folks. This is a trend that really matters. Employment in the United States, private sector employment as a matter of fact, and this is a 12-month moving average. So we have a nice smooth trend. And you can see that the trend is positive. I mean, it's fairly simple. More people are working now than they were working a while ago. And we're running above year-ago levels. In the healthcare sector, in the manufacturing sector, in the service sector, they're all running above year-ago levels. And the trend is continuing to rise. That's how you know what's going to be going on in the future. Because that trend is rising and it has legs. It's going to continue to move up. Is it going to move up as strong as we saw off this 92 trough? I doubt it. Is it going to move up as strong as we saw back here in 2004, 2005? I doubt that will achieve that slope either. Because we have disincentivized people in terms of work here in the United States. Quite the opposite, we have incentivized them not to work. But despite that, we're seeing that private sector employment is on the rise, and that means more people are going to be spending more money in the future. They're going to be making more money in the future. This is a chart that should be on the front page of the Wall Street Journal and any, every other newspaper at least once a month. This is a recovery. Last year, I recommended four currencies for you to move your money into, and if you took my advice, you made some money, and it's the same currencies this year. I encourage you to take some of your hard-earned U.S. wealth and transfer it into other economic means, in particular, the Canadian loonie. Why Canada? Because they have a positive demographic, which is economically a must. Because during a period of inflation, you want to be involved in a country that has a wealth of natural resources, and that's Canada. Because Canada also has the best banking system on the planet, and therefore they're one of the safest places to be at the moment. That's three good reasons. If you need a fourth good reason, it's because the Canadians are so darn friendly, it's just fun to go visit your money. All right? Can't go wrong in Canada. Where's your border? 
How far can you think? How differently can you think? Because if you think in the next 30 years looks like the last 30 years, you lose. If you think there are going to be more opportunities going forward, you win. Because there will be. Because you can make them happen. You still have that power.